hills of New Mexico were what you once called home, but you ended up here a few states north, where the pronghorn roamed. It was some time in the late God forsaken state of Wyoming let you know you'd be here until spring but you didn't The way our story is told is that this, the basically snow kept us here. The bad weather kept the family in Wyoming. And so uh, last spring, my grandmother had, she was having some heart problems. <clears throat> she, was, she wasn't doing too great. And I just felt compelled to just try to, like, being told stories is a big part of this family. Right? And she loves telling stories, and I love listening to them. And I guess writing that song was kind of my way of trying to tell her own story back to her. So she knew that like her, our story would continue to be told. I call it Wyoming Snow. And the, the, the premise of the song is kind of how we ended up here in Wyoming. <clears throat> and how how while New Mexico is very important to us, and that's where, where we're from, where our people are from, Wyoming is our home now because we ended up here. And in the song, you know, I, I wrote the song for my grandma, so I tried to keep in mind what, what she might like to hear. So almost every verse is about family, because I know that that's what's important to her. Across town, there's signs the red. No Mexicans or dogs allowed. But despite the cold temperatures, you decided to stick around. And your youngest first spoke Spanish your mother's tongue But you soon realized what you needed to do To ensure their futures would be strong And you didn't They had, by that time, they had both learned English in textbooks, and they could speak English. But they raised their, their first couple of kids bilingual. But then the kids started going to school, and they, they, they couldn't code switch that well, so they would use a Spanish word here and there, and they'd be made fun of. And so <clears throat> my grandparents made what I view as one of the biggest sacrifices they could have made and that is they decided to only speak English to the kids because they wanted what was best for their children. And, you know, this was, this was the 50s. This was before there was studies that showed, you know, that bilingual kids <clears throat> often end up, you know, more, I don't know, better off with better cognitive skills, you know, and that was before 
That was before something like that was valued. At this time, English was the language of power where they were, so they did what they had to do. So my mom was a little younger, so she didn't grow up speaking Spanish. Um, we've all, we all speak a little Spanish, and, and also there's like certain, certain words that kind of get, that have stayed around in Spanish, you know, but, but in general, no, we don't speak Spanish. I've, I've worked on it. I'd love to speak it one day, but I've never lived in a, in a community that speaks it, so it's hard. When, uh, you know, when we get the, the, the kind of migration story from the grandparents, is when they, when they ended up in Rollins, you know, they, they, they were in New Mexico, where m most of the people they interacted with were, were similar to them. <clears throat> and they ended up in Rollins, and they, you know, they started seeing signs on businesses that would say things like, no Mexicans or dogs allowed. And they just had to, just had to learn how to deal with that, you know? They found, they found a community within that larger community. Where the brown horn roam. 